Hey folks, so I wanted to cover the series where we'd probably see the pot biggest potential for an upset from the recent Esports World Cup. That is the main event that's happening in the League of Legends space right now. So I wanted to take the time to kind of cover what the current most up-to-date version of the drafting meta is and across these two teams and how TL managed to get a pretty decent chance against T1, even sneaking out a win. But overall, in terms of just drafting resources and flexibility and the methodology, you can kind of see here T1 both off the precipice of you know the ability to pick a lot of different champions and also execute on a different ton of different styles and that's what basically allowed them to kind of stay in their comfort zone make the appropriate adaptations and kind of come on top so we're starting with game one here which is the game that tl actually win and this is a very tl draft to say the least it's pretty funny and to be honest with you even though let's say I wouldn't say Team 1 misplayed this draft per se, because they actually made really good adjustments. And it's just probably because of the, just how unorthodox some of these, like, it's a very League of Legends sort of moment where sometimes it's just like, these things happen. And it's, um this is a draft where both teams have agency to win. So I wouldn't say one team really fumbled or anything. So I can kind of explain the flow. So TL start with the B1 Sejuani, which is normal because it gives a lot of options and T1 respond with the Maokai as a, let's say, let's call it a soft flex into support, but mainly in the jungle role combined with Azir. So they're going to leave with an Azir opener, very standard. And um, you can kind of see both sides of Triss Quirky being uh, banned as well as LeBlanc. So you can kind of see Azir is pretty much next in line. This is where the spice comes in because normally when you pick, um, we see the Ziggs come out from APA, which is a very APA pick. He's, you know, he's the Ziggs guy. That's why he draws bands by himself. And that's why he's such a good um, blue side player because it's just very often that you can get a lot of off angles. And then a team liquid does get a lot of advantage from being able to pick something like the Ziggs. And this is a classic example of that, right? You can think of it like the Corky into is your matchup from before, except a little bit better because Ziggs has really good range and really good poke, known as a Siege Mage. And then they follow up with the Zeri. T1 end up responding with the Ezreal pick on three, and then they can ban they focus their bans towards top side. It actually is both teams, in fact, and um, and it's bas basically based on the picks being both support and top lane. There's not much remaining in terms of flexibility for this draft. This is because they haven't opted into too many fluxes. We could argue the Maokai could be a soft flux top as well, but you know both teams with the support meta being relatively rigid as well. You're just going to basically pick your utility champs of choice, and then opt for uh your top lane counter pick on five so tl try to mitigate this as much as possible with the jack spline so they've they, they've identified that they need as much presence as possible in the top lane the strongest blind pick possible and t1 are also basically onto that right they ban out renekton and Cassante because they know this draft basically hinges on the b4 b5 and getting as decent of a top matchup as possible and you can see the t1's comp overall is actually pretty well equipped to deal with the six right they've got a they've got a um, poke comp of their own they've got the ezreal and jace and they've got decent matchups into both and they've got a good a lot of good setup it's just that the um this is more so an issue with the way that the, sort of the way the game flowed and that's where the aspect of draft could probably go in and where you can argue like hey you know maybe this was not the right pacing for t1 to really play and it could have been better for uh, t1 to play a different type of comp that would be able to get them more advantages and they play through these advantages especially on mid you know, Azir is like, Fikir's very willing to take these um, sort of, like, not require many draft resources, let's say, and be picked early on because, you know, uh, he's so willing to just um, play out these matchups. And as long as it's relatively playable, then like, it's, it's not going to matter too much. And every other player pretty much has so much presence in terms of their counter pick, especially on the bottom side, especially since they're so creative and so flexible. And you can kind of really tell. Despite this, um, all the chaos tl played it pretty well to be honest with you and they used a lane swap to um help mitigate it a little bit further and you know this is i would say less about the draft and more about the gameplay so touching on that i wanted to move into game two in fact i've actually already covered this game because of the um specific pick spoiler alert, the zeri top at flex so if you want to cover in depth if you want an in-depth coverage as to how this played out i would recommend that video it's a video before this one but i can quickly tldr it Basically, from a draft perspective, they left the Triss Quirky trade open, and therefore they ended up going for it. T1 do a Zeri into the Ezreal, but they don't realize it's actually Zeri flex into Cassante pick, 
And this makes it really, really disgusting because then it not only unlocks a really strong top matchup, it also lets him get a free second counter pick onto bottom lane, which is very unheard of. And this pretty much creates a comp where T1 are essentially invulnerable to all the matchups. They have three winning lanes. Yes, they get outskilled in terms of poke, but it doesn't really matter because they are so much stronger and they can get so much advantage. And it doesn't, it, it's just like, your comp is irrespective in professional play if you just have so much pressure all over the map because you are able to make your comp stronger. And because your comp's that much stronger from your advantage, then it doesn't really matter as much. So that's pretty much how that sort of played out. And they, they changed the sort of vibe of the draft to accommodate for the Quirky Trist matchup, right? Because it essentially eliminates two champions from the pool. You know, you're gonna, they're, they're both basically BIS and you're just gonna pretty much take both and it's all contingent on the remaining four champions. Game three. Ziggs remains banned, it's pretty smart. There is a little bit of a mismatch here in the Quirky Triss matchup as T1 are uh, essentially let it through, I, I believe. And in exchange, they gain Ash, and which is a really huge asset, especially for a team like T1, because both of their bottom laners are able to pilot it. And this can change a lot of, this creates a lot of different uh, bottom lane scenarios that T1 can play around. And this is, especially with R5, they have a lot of flex picks that can they can basically really utilize. T1 come up with the Talia into the Triss, which is a really good tech matchup. So, you know, again, pacing change. And I think I think this is really good for T1 because as well, they are able to play a higher tempo sort of game. And, you know, Faker really loves that. I think he have that identifies timers among the best in the world uh, for this. And you can basically see the outcome of this draft come from that uh, Ash flex that they're holding the entire time. So they see the Zeri, they've hedged against it as much as, much as possible, but T1 still have the AD carry support flex on five. So they can basically access any type of lane that they want to. If they want to play uh, heavy CC, they can go lockdown CC, engage champion, even though two of them are banned. They can go Ash support, go for different like uh, siege comps. You know, there's so many options for them. And that's what makes it really hard to deal with this Ash pick. And you know, with with a team like T1, even when, with these good bans from TL, you're going to have to pick something to let through, and they decided to go against the Ash. It's a little bit hard to deal with. Um, T TL, in this game, they pick a pretty, like, that's quote-unquote decent comp, but it's a comp that doesn't gain much advantage, right? It's something that's, like, relatively, you know, it's stable, but you're not going to gain much. And T1 are playing to gain. And you can kind of see it here. Now with a Silver Ash locked, it's like really hard for TL to really lane, especially on bottom side. T1 can really isolate and just um, dilute this Udyr lane. Um, sure, it's a counter pick into the Cassante, but there's so many of those and like, people come up with their own picks all the time. And I really would have liked TL to come up with more of a aggressive pick in this case. You know, this is because stylistically Impact is not really much of like a damage type uh, player. He's more of like a tank player and it kind of makes sense. And as a result, I think... Um, you can kind of see TL playing drafting to not lose here versus drafting to win, and that's what basically edges out T1 in, in this draft overall. They're they're just very comfortable. They know what they want. They they really like um, their styles of drafting, and they, they command a lot of power in draft. You know, a lot of these same champions they end up getting banned a lot of the time, and it's very very hard for teams to really catch up to how they draft and how flexibility they draft. I would argue one of the best teams probably is like G2 with how creative and how they're willing to deploy just as insane solutions to them, arguably more crazy. And I think teams like, like sure, you can you can uh, alter your gameplay as much as you want, but I think you need to also be able to pilot your, champ, uh, pilot your draft and set your team up for success in that way. And that's basically what happened here. So another massive class from T1 here, and hopefully this provides some insight to you guys. Hopefully this was a fun to watch and see you in the next one.